Hi all, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is a part 2 of the modular arithmetic topic. So let's get started. In the previous video, we learned about the definition of multiplicative inverse. So two integers a and b are multiplicative inverse of each other if a cross b is congruent to 1 mod n and the GCD of a and n is equal to 1, which is the condition of existence of multiplicative inverse. Also, an integer may or may not have a multiplicative inverse. In this video, we are going to learn how to calculate the multiplicative inverse of a number using the extended Euclidean algorithm. But before understanding this, we need to understand what is GCD. So let's cover that first. Let's start with the definition. So GCD, that is the greatest common divisor of two integers, is the largest integer that can divide both integers without a remainder. Let's understand using an example. Suppose we want to calculate the GCD of 18 and 24. So first we find the divisors of 18, which are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9 and 18. Then we find the divisors of 24, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12 and 24. Now we find the common divisors. So we can see the common divisors are 1, 2, 3 and 6. And then we find the maximum of this list, which gives us a GCD. In this case, the GCD is 6. So as the name suggests, GCD is the largest common divisor. Now let's look at some properties of GCD. Starting with the first properties, GCD of a comma b is equal to GCD of b comma a. So if we shuffle the numbers, the GCD will remain the same. The second property is GCD of a comma b is equal to GCD of absolute of a and absolute of b. This means that the GCD is independent of the sign of the integers. The third property is GCD of a comma zero is equal to a. This means that if b is equal to zero, then the GCD of the two numbers is a. Cool, now we have understood what is GCD and we have learned the properties of GCD. Now we can move to the next topic, that is Euclidean algorithm. Let's look at its definition. So if a and b are positive integers, then the GCD of a and b is equal to GCD of b, comma a mod b. So this is the formula of the Euclidean algorithm. So here we recursively replace a with b and b with a mod b and we repeat this until a mod b is equal to 0. In that case, the current b is the GCD of the two numbers. Let's take an example to understand it better. Suppose we have to find the GCD of 25 and 60. Let's take the formula and steps from the previous slide for a reference. We will calculate the GCD of the two numbers using table with columns as a, b and a mod b. So initially a is 25, b is 60 and then we calculate a mod b that is 25 mod 60 which is 25. Now we replace a with b that is 60 and we replace b with a mod b that is 25. So we can see we are diagonally shifting the elements to the left. So 60 is diagonally shifted to left, same goes with 25. And then we calculate 60 mod 25, which is 10. Moving forward, we then shift 25 to the left, followed by 10, and then we calculate 25 mod 10, which is 5. Then we again shift 10 to the left, and again 5 to the left, and calculate 10 mod 5, that is 0. So we can see that a mod b is 0. And as the formula suggests that if a mod b is 0, then the current b is the GCD of the two numbers. So the current b is 5, and hence the GCD of 25 and 60 is 5. This was all about Euclidean algorithm. Now we have completed the foundation required for a final algorithm that is extended Euclidean algorithm. So let's jump into it. Let's start with the definition. So if a and b are positive integers, then the GCD of a comma b is equal to a into x plus b into y, where x and y are integers. Before diving into the mathematical details, Let's first understand the use of extended Euclidean algorithm. So if we are provided with a and b, then we can find the value of x and y using the extended Euclidean algorithm. It is also used to find the GCD of a and b. It checks whether multiplicative inverse of a in zb exists or not, and it gives a multiplicative inverse if it exists. Now let's look at all the formulas behind the extended Euclidean algorithm. So the step one is initialization. So we initialize a1 as 1, a2 as 0, and a3 as b, that is the second integer. Then we initialize b1 as 0, b2 as 1, and b3 as a, that is the first integer. So these are the six variables that are required in the extended Euclidean algorithm, and these are the initial values. Now the step 2 is looping. So it's an iterative process. So first we calculate qi which is a floor of 
a3 of i minus 1 and b3 of i minus 1, where i is the current row number. This means that i minus 1 is the previous row. Then we calculate the values of all the six variables in this loop. So a1 of i is equal to b1 of i minus 1, a2 of i is equal to b2 of i minus 1, and a3 of i is equal to b3 of i minus 1. So in a nutshell, we are assigning the values of all b's of the previous row to all a's in the current row. Next are the initialization of the b variables. So b1 of i is equal to a1 of i minus 1 minus qi into b1 of i minus 1. Similarly, b2 of i is equal to a2 of i minus 1 minus qi into b2 of i minus 1 and similarly b3 of i is equal to a3 of i minus 1 minus qi into b3 of i minus 1. I know at the first glance it is looking complex but be with me for the next 5 minutes and you will understand it clearly. Since it is an iterative process, there should be a stopping condition. So we iterate this till b3 is equal to 0 or is equal to 1. Let's move this to the left so that we can have some space. And finally in step 3 we get the output. Here there are two cases. First case is when b3 is equal to 0. In this case, mi that is the multiplicative inverse doesn't exist. And the GC of a and b is the current value of a3. And the value of x is the current value of a2. And the value of y is the current value of a1. The second case is when b3 is equal to 1. In this case, the mi exists. The GC of a and b is the current value of b3 which is equal to 1. Here x and mi share the same value which is the current value of b2 and the value of y is the current value of b1. At the first glance we may think that the external Euclidean algorithm has lot of equations and it's complex and that's natural but trust me with the example in the next slide it will be clear. So the example is divided into three parts. First we have to find the GCD of 23 and 100. Second we have to find the multiplicative inverse of 23 in z100 and then we have to find two integers x and y such that 23 into x plus 100 into y is equal to GCD of 23 and 100. Even though there are three questions, we can answer all these questions with the single extended Euclidean algorithm. So let's solve it. So the step 1 is initialization. So a1 is 1, a2 is 0 and a3 is 100 which is the second number. Then we have b1 as 0, b2 as 1 and b3 as 23 which is the first number. Now step 2 is looping. We will construct a table to depict the looping step. So the columns of the table are q, a1, a2, a3 and then b1, b2, b3. Initially q is null. This is because if we look at the formula, qi is dependent on i-1 and since this is the first row, there is no i-1. So here q is null. Then we have a1 as 1 a2 as 0, a3 as 100, b1 as 0, b2 as 1, and b3 as 23. Let's start with the looping part. So first we calculate qi, that is the floor of a3 of i minus 1 divided by b3 of i minus 1. So your a3 is 100 and b3 is 23. So if we divide 100 by 23, the answer is 4 point something something and then we apply the floor operation, we get the answer as 4. So your q is 4. Then we initialize the values of a with the previous values of b. So a1 becomes 0, a2 becomes 1 and a3 becomes 23. Now let's calculate the new values of b. So here the formula is b1 of i is equal to a1 of i minus 1 minus qi into b1 of i minus 1. Let's keep the formula aside and focus on the pattern that is used to calculate the values. So b1 is 1 minus 4 into 0 that is 1 b2 is 0 minus 4 into 1 that is minus 4 and b3 is 100 minus 4 into 23 which is 8. Let's move further you will understand the pattern it is following. So again we calculate the qi that is a3 by b3. So your a3 is 23 and b3 is 8. So if we divide 23 by 8 we get 2 point something and then we apply the floor operation and we get the value as 2. Then the new values of a will be the previous values of b. So we have 1, minus 4 and 8. Now carefully observe the pattern. So b1 is 0 minus 2 into 1 that is minus 2. b2 is 1 minus 2 
into minus 4 that is 1 plus 8 that is 9 and b3 is 23 minus 2 into 8 that is 23 minus 16 which gives us 7. So if we observe we are taking the previous a and subtract the product of the current quotient and the previous b which is the formula itself that b of i is equal to a of i minus 1 minus q of i into b of i minus 1. So if you remember the pattern, no need to remember the formula, it will come naturally. Let's calculate the last row. So again we calculate qi which in this case is 8 divided by 7 which gives us 1 point something and then we apply the lower function which gives the value of q as 1. Now we initialize the a with the previous b. So here we have minus 2, 9 and 7. Now let's calculate the value of b. So it is 1 minus 1 into minus 2 that is 1 plus 2 which gives us 3. Then we have minus 4 minus 1 into 9 that is minus 4 minus 9 which gives us minus 13. And then we have 8 minus 1 into 7 that is 8 minus 7 which gives us 1. Here b3 is 1 which implies that mi exists. Also b3 is the GCD of the two numbers. Since b3 is 1, the current value of b2 is the multiplicative inverse that is mi. Also this is the value of x and the current value of b1 is y. Now let's note down all the answers. So the first question was find the GCD of 23 and 100 which is the current value of b3 that is 1. So the GCD of 23 and 100 is 1. The second question was find the multiplicative inverse of 23 in z100 which is the current value of b2. So mi of 23 in z100 is minus 13. But we know all the values should be within z100 that is from 0 to 99. So we apply the mod operator. And we know when the number is negative we just add n. So minus 13 plus 100 gives us 87. And finally we want the integers that satisfies this equation which is the extended Euclidean algorithm. So value of x is minus 13 and the value of y is 3. So we have found the solution to all this question using a single algorithm which is the extended Euclidean algorithm. So we can see how versatile and powerful this algorithm is. We'll again be using this algorithm in the multiplicative cipher which we'll cover in the next video. So that's it for the video guys. Thanks for watching the video and if you have any doubt please do let us know in the comment section below and if you have found the video helpful then do like and share the video with your friends and subscribe to be the best channel for more such videos. Meet you in the next video of this ESA series. Bye bye.